Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about the various philosophical perspectives of the self. So before we proceed, let me bring out the philosopher in you. I have some few questions for you to answer before we proceed with our discussion. Question number one. Why do you think it is important to understand the philosophies about the self? Number two. What do you mean about self? Number three. Are there such things as souls or do we have a soul? Do we wander in earth after death? Last question, are we a combination of mind and body, or just minds, or just a body triggered by stimulus? So let's ask ourselves about that, and now we proceed with the discussion. So what is philosophy? Philosophy comes from the Greek words philos, means love, and sophia, means wisdom. It is the study of acquiring knowledge through rational thinking and inquiries that involves in answering questions regarding the nature and existence of man and the world we live in. Next. Okay, so now let's proceed with the understanding of the self. So self-understanding is the awareness and the ability to understand one's thoughts and actions. It is a subjective sense of the self and a complex mixture of unconscious and conscious thoughts, attitudes, and perceptions. So you ask yourself, do I understand myself? Can I um, tell myself that I understand myself? Okay, so let's proceed. So... Why do we need to understand the ancient philosophical perspective of self? The different perspectives and views on self can be best seen and understood by revisiting the opinions of the philosophers. So our first philosopher is Socrates, born circa 470 BC in Athens, Greece. When the political climate of Greece turned out, Socrates was sentenced to death by hemlock poisoning in 399 BC, and he accepted his judgment rather than fleeing into exile. Um, he is famous with his Socratic method. His Socratic method laid the groundwork of Western systems of logic and philosophy. So, um, Socratic method is a form of cooperative argumentative dialogue between individuals. Um, it's based on asking and answering questions to simulate critical thinking and to draw out ideas and underlying implicit assumptions. He also pointed out that human choice was motivated by desire for happiness. His ultimate wisdom comes from knowing oneself. The more a person knows, the greater his or her her ability to reason and make choices that will bring true happiness. Socrates believed that a possession of knowledge is a virtue and ignorance is a depravity. The acceptance of ignorance is the beginning of acquisition of knowledge. Next, according to him, there are two fundamental questions. The first one is the what. Understanding ourselves is through internal questioning or introspection. Understanding our strengths, our weaknesses, our likes, and our dislikes. And um, according to him, everyone has a knowledge itself. You just have to remember it. Knowledge is inherent in man, not from outside. Wisdom is learning to recollect. The next question is, how then? This knowledge of oneself can be achieved only through the Socratic method, a dialogue between the soul and itself. So, um, without this work on yourself, life is worthless according to Socrates. An unexamined life is not worth living. That is according to Socrates. And also, 
The only good is knowledge, and the only evil is ignorance. He also believed that man is composed of body and soul, wherein the soul is immortal and perfect, and the body is impermanent and decays after a person's death. He also believed that um, these important principles, never doing wrong or participating in any wrongdoing, even directly, a person who knows what is good and right could not act against it. Socrates also believed that human life does not end at one's death. He explained that death is the departure of the soul or the eternal world, and one continues to live in the world after death. So he also um, has a concept of reality that divi um, divides into two realms, the physical realm and the ideal realm. So um, the physical realm is um, changeable. The body belongs to the physical realm, and the ideal realm is unchanging, and the soul belongs to the ideal realm. So next, let's talk about Plato. Plato was born circa 428 BC. Ancient, um, he is also a, an ancient Greek philosopher. Plato was a student of Socrates and a teacher to Aristotle. He founded the Academy in Athens, one of the first institutions of higher learning in the Western world. Uh, he believed that a person who is a follower of truth and wisdom will not be tempted by vices and will always be correct or moral or ethical. And he believes that the soul has three parts, rational, spirited, and appetitive soul. So rational soul, it's the true and good for the person. The tribe of our lives, it decides what to do, when to do it, and think possible results that depends on their actions. Spirited soul seeks for honor and competitive values and governs a person's emotions, a part that wants to do something or to right the wrongs that they observe. Appetitive soul is driven by desire and the need to satisfy the physical self. It is also drawn to food, drinks, and sex. Um, if you know the id, ego, and superego, it's more likely the same concept. Next, and for him, the three aspects are in a dynamic relationship with one another and sometimes they are in conflict. So according to him, when in conflict, um, the reason sorts out things and control the spiritual aspect and the appetite aspect to restore the harmonious relationship. For him, it is the responsibility of the reason to sort things out para and they will not be in conflict. Also, Plato believes that genuine happiness can be achieved by people who consistently make sure that the reason is in control of the spirit and the appetite. Rene Descartes, okay, the father of modern philosophy, um, known philosophical statement is Cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. He believes that the self is a combination of two entities. Cogito, the things that think, which is the mind. And extensa, extension of the mind, which is the body. Descartes also asserts that there is a distinction between the mind and the body. To develop himself, man has to use his own mind and thinking abilities which are independent from each other. To him, body and its perceptions cannot fully be trusted or can easily be deceived. Okay? So examples are our dreams and our perceptions. Okay? We sometimes um, find ourselves daydreaming or we tend to see that um, we are we tend to see illusions. Okay. Next, 
We should focus on the mind in order to perceive as who we are or the essence or the essence of our existence because we cannot always trust our senses. Okay? So he also um, had a theory called the Cartesian dualism. One's thoughts are a reflection of one's beliefs, values, conditions, experiences, and development. So Descartes' view about the body is that it is nothing but a machine that is attached to the mind. So according to him, but what then am I? A thinking thing. But what is a thinking thing? It is a thing that doubts, understands, affirms, denies, imagines, and perceives. So next, let's have David, David Hume. David Hume is a Scottish philosopher, historian, economist, and essayist. Hume conceived that um, you conceive of philosophy as inductive experimental science of human nature. Um, Hume tried to describe how the mind works in acquiring what is not, um, what is called knowledge. He mentioned that all knowledge is derived from sense experience. So according to him, experience is a bundle or collection of different perceptions which succeed each other with an inconceivable rapidity and are in perpetual flux and movement. So um, David Hume's impression and ideas can be found by examining one's experience. So according to him, impressions are the basic object of our experiences, which forms the core of our thoughts, while ideas are copies of impressions because they are not as lively as our impressions. According to him, there is no permanent self because impressions of things are based from our experiences where we can create our ideas and knowledge. Okay? And um, according to him, there are categorized in two. Impressions are vivid because they are the products of our direct experience with the world. And ideas are copies of impression. So he mentioned also that what one thinks as self is simply a combination of all experiences with a particular person. Uh, man can attain knowledge by experiencing. Okay. Next. Next, Immanuel Kant was a German philosopher. Kant believed that reason is also the source of morality. The collection of impressions and different contents is what is what it only takes to define a person. Um, awareness of different emotions that we have, impressions, and behavior is only a part of ourselves. He also believes that the mind organizes the impression that men get from the external world. He also believes that a certain level of consciousness or sense that uses our intuition, which synthesizes all the experiences, impressions, and perceptions of ourselves, will pave the way to define and know who we really are. He believes that a person has an intrinsic worth and they are rational agents. Moral goodness exists when the rational creatures act from goodwill. Morality requires us to treat each person and people should be treated well with respect without manipulating just to achieve one's goal. Next, next is Maurice Marlowe Ponty. He was a French philosopher. He believes that one cannot experience that is not an embodied experience, or um, basically speaking, um, the body is a primary site of knowing the world. Okay, one's actions, behaviors, and language used could be the reflection of our united perception of the world. He also believes that mind and body are intertwined. They cannot be separated from one another. 
Um, he is known for his works on phenomenology. It is the experience. Um, it means that the experience is the foundation of our world. So, um, according to him, experience is living in the body and acting through the body. He also believes that all knowledge of ourselves and our world is based on subjective experience. And our last philosopher, Gilbert Ryle, he was a British philosopher. According to him, the self is the way people behave. So he provided the philosophical principle, I act, therefore I am. In short, the self is the same as bodily behavior. So the behavior that we show, emotions and actions, are the reflection of our mind. And as such, is a manifestation of who we are. The things that we do, how we behave and react, are all other components, like the way we talk, walk, and look, is generally who we are as a person. And that ends our discussion. Which philosophers do you agree most? Okay. Um, have you ever thought of the answers to the questions that was asked before the presentation? Okay. And um, for the last part, you will have your application and assessment.